Hello there friends, this is Joel Humphreys. I'm glad to be with you and share with you another word from the Bible, the Holy Word of God, and I want you to know that it's a word I believe that God has given me, and I pray it will bless your life and heart. The Bible I read is in the fact that, that we need to possess the land. This was the word that God gave unto Moses and to Joshua back in the early days of the Israelite nation when he led them out of Egypt and brought them into the river Jordan and told them to cross over the Jordan into the promised land in the land of Canaan where grew the blessings and the land of milk and honey. And uh, we read this word in the book of Joshua, the first chapter, and he said to them, uh, today, <clears throat> today, you will pass. You must pass over the Jordan to go in and possess the land which the Lord your God gives you to possess it. Have not I commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What a promise. I want to speak to you on the fact that the Lord has set before us a good land. Every one of us, I hope you're a Christian. And if you're a Christian and you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord, then the land before you is your life that is before you. And you are to go in and possess this life that God has given. It's a good life. You'll find milk and honey in this life. You'll find the good things of God. Now there will be some pitfalls and there will be some trials and there will be some storms we have to go through because we live in a fallen world, a world that is marred with sin. And so, praise God, when you become a child of God, you become a member of the kingdom of God. And we as a kingdom of God are, are told that we can go over and possess this life that we live. Live it for the glory of God. Live it and know that God is going to bring you through. He's going to bless you in your life. He's going to give you victory. He said, Now I know my thoughts towards you, thoughts that are good and not evil, to give you a good and a mighty, uh, uh, powerful, uh, praise God, uh, future. And He's going to do that for you because He loves you. And so, praise God, he's got a great deal of things for you, and they're waiting for you. I want you to know there are some things we need to learn as we go in and possess the land. Number one, one thing we need to learn is, over in 1 Peter, we read these words in the, uh, in the uh, book of 1 Peter, and the fourth chapter, we read the fact that we're to use what God has given us for, for God and for the good of others. This is one way we possess this life that we live in. This is the way we possess the land. And First Peter, the first chapter, uh, in, uh, fourth chapter, in verse 10 and 11, the Bible says, As every man has received the gift uh, that, uh, that God has given him to minister one to another. If any man speaks, let him you speak as the word of God. If any man serves, Whatever he does, let him do it with the strength God gives him, in order, in order that Jesus Christ will be praise, praise and honor and dominion forever and ever to his name. Amen. So here the Bible is saying that we need to use whatever powerful gift God has given us to use it for God and for good. And to use it whatever we're doing. If we're working in an office, let us work for the glory of God. If we're digging a ditch, dig for the glory of God. If you're selling cars, we sell cars for the glory of God. If I preach, I must preach for speaking the word of God and for the glory of God. So do what you can. But do it with an eye toward thanking God that you're able to do what you're doing. You may be able working in an office. You may be selling insurance. It is whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, you may be working in a restaurant, whatever you might be doing, try to do what you do with a thankful heart to God that He's given you the opportunity and the strength to do it. And this is the way we possess the life that God has given. Go in and possess the land because it's a land that flows with milk and honey. It's a good land with all of its problems and it's, it, it is still a good land. 
And another thing we need to do in, in, in this good land is to read your Bible. I hope you have a Bible and I hope you read it because it's so important that you read your Bible. D.L. Moody said, I, when I became a Christian, I prayed for the Lord God to give me faith. To give me faith. To give me faith. But he said, one day I opened my Bible and I began to read and I read where it says, faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Well, he said, I, closed, I had closed my Bible and prayed for faith. But he said, I opened my Bible and began to read it and faith has been growing ever since. So, read your Bible, just a few verses a day, and it'll bring faith, and it'll bring hope, and it'll bring help. God loves you very much. I love you, and I pray God's blessings on you. If you're not a Christian, I want you to pray a brief prayer with me, asking God to forgive you and Jesus to come into your heart as the Lord of your life. And you'll know then that you're going into a good land and you're going to possess it for the glory of God. I want you to pray this prayer like this. Say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me. I believe He rose again. I believe He's coming back. I pray you come into my heart and help me live for you as the Lord of my life. Thank you, dear God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Pray a prayer like that, and the Lord will make you so strong. You'll become a Christian, and you'll become one that belongs to God, and you know that you have Christ as your Savior. And He's the beloved of your soul. And you'll begin to love God and love people. It won't be overnight, but you'll grow into that grace, and you'll grow stronger day by day. And so I believe I'm stronger today than I was years ago when I found the Lord, when Jesus found me. And so praise God. Find you a good church and go to. And oh, worship with God's people. Read your Bible and pray. This is the way we possess the land. This is the way we go in and possess it for the glory of the Lord God. For the glory of the Lord God. Over in the book of, of John, in the ninth chapter, it teaches us the fact that we're to, we're to recognize that time is short. Time is short. We don't have a whole lot of time. The Bible says in John 9, 4 and 5, Jesus said uh, uh, in verse 4 and 5, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night comes when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. And this was true. Jesus was here only a short time in his public ministry. So uh, about three short years and then it was the cross, and then it was the grave, and then it was his resurrection, and he went back to heaven. And he's coming back. I want you to be ready for it. And then he tells us that he, as long as he's in the world, he's the light of the world. And he has to do the work soon because he doesn't have much time. Now we can take up those same verses because Jesus said to you and to me, we have become lights in the world. He said, you are the light of the world. A city that sits on a hill cannot be hid. And you do not take a light, a, lamp, a, a candle, and put it under a bed when you want to light the room. No, you put it up on a candlestick where it gives light to all the house. So let your light shine for me, the Lord said. And you let it shine by prayer, and by reading the Bible, by forgiving others, and by denying self, and by loving God and loving your fellow man. Oh, praise the Lord. Jesus said, we don't have much time. We, gotta, we must work the works of him that sent us while it is day, for night comes when no man can work. And so we must now do what we can, while we can. And as long as we're in the world, Christians, we are the light of the world. The light of the world, the hope of the world. And so let that light shine and live for God. And let it be yours to serve and mighty, mighty Savior. Let it be yours to keep going and never going back and giving up. Go on, because God's going with you. Have not I commanded you, saith the Lord, be strong and of good courage. Neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God goes with you wherever you go. Praise the Lord. He's with you right now, dear friend. He's right there with you. In your time of it, you're experiencing whatever it is, He's there to bless, to strengthen, to hold you up, to keep you going. 
And so we read in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the final word is that we need to look to Jesus. We need to look to Jesus for that's where we, we find real help. The Bible says that we're to run the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Praise God. The Lord loves you. Look to Jesus. Keep looking to Him, dear friend. He's looking at you and He's calling you. He says, come on. I have forgiven you. You are mine. Don't look back. Don't worry about the things that have happened in the past or what might happen tomorrow. Just look to me today and let me live my life in you for the glory of God. God bless you, dear friends. We need to go in and possess the Lamb. In Jesus' name, amen.